All right. So in this session, we're going to talk about invasive airway management and how to optimally position your patient for your greatest chances of success. So again, remember with airway management, we are trying to oxygenate our patients first and foremost. Hypoxia is the major emergency, six minutes to get it fixed. We're trying to minimize the risk of aspiration. And then when appropriate, we're trying to provide ventilation, that is reduce the amount of carbon dioxide. So how do you maximize your best case scenarios? Well, there are both intrinsic and in extrinsic barriers to airway management. So you can't change a patient's anatomy, but you can recognize that there are certain anatomical features that it's going to make it harder for you to manage an airway. You can predict many difficult airways. Uh, you can position your patient properly. You can have a backup plan and you can recognize and treat decompensation. So other than not being able to change your patient's anatomy, most things that make an airway the best possible scenario are things that are under your control. So we talk about this concept of the four cornerstones of airway management and specifically of intubation. Mean EMS, it's the scope and the backup blade, the bougie, the suction and the endotracheal tube. Critical Care Training Institute, it's the scope and the backup scope, the bougie, suction and the McGill, and an endotracheal tube and a backup endotracheal tube. Having these four cornerstones in place greatly increase your chances of success. Otherwise, you end up struggling your way through the airway. Now for the rest of this, I'm going to focus on optimal patient positioning because I believe that the most common mistake we make in intubating patients is either failing to position them correctly in the first place, failing to position them frankly at all, just trying to intubate them where they, they lay, or putting them into the wrong position. So oftentimes we lay, see them laying flat supine, and that is not the optimal position because when we think about the optimal position, we want to align the three axes of the airway, the oropharynx, the hypopharynx, and the larynx. And when they're laying flat supine, you've got an almost 90 degree turn. Not terrible, we have tools that can manage it, but not optimal. Hyperflexed certainly doesn't help because now we've got a hyperacute angle and the tools that we have makes it even harder to manage those airways. Hyperextended is also not perfect. You're still getting a 90 degree, but it's that 90 degree, even though it's manageable, is not ideally lining up the axes. Now, key point here, this is head tilt chin lift position. And this is, in a lot of ways, the optimal position for non-invasive bag valve mass ventilation. And that's one of the most common errors. We're bag valve mask ventilating a patient, getting ready to intubate them, and when we go to intubate them, we fail to reposition the head. So what is the optimal position? Well, ideally, we want to align all those axes, the larynx, the pharynx, the mouth, and unless a patient has a C-spine injury, we do this by flexing the neck forward and then extending over the atlanto-occipital joint at the base of the skull. Basically, we're trying to align the edge of the earlobe with the sternal notch. So to do that, we flex the neck by placing a folded towel beneath the head, and we extend the atlanto-occipital joint. So we either tilt the head backward or displace the mandible forward. So it looks like this. You can see, looking at that patient, that if you open her mouth, you'll pretty much be able to see her vocal cords with a flashlight. It's going to be a straight shot. So what are the common errors? Again, and I think this is one that we do so frequently, we're ventilating the patient with a bag valve mask, and we leave the patient in the head tilt chin lift position when we go to intubate. So we don't flex the C-spine anteriorly. Sometimes we leave the head hyperflexed. In an obese patients, sometimes we don't pad sufficiently behind the head and shoulders. Putting one to two blankets in there can basically turn a hyperflexed, almost unvisualizable airway 
into a perfectly aligned uh, airway. And then you want to provide yourself, uh, position yourself correctly relative to the patient. So you want to have your head, top of their head, somewhere between your xiphoid and your inner mammary line. The patient can be either supine or semi-erect. I actually really like to intubate patients in a slightly sitting position. Now I'm tall, so it's not that hard for me to have their head in the right position relative to my chest, even when they're sitting up some. But that lets gravity take care of a lot of things that otherwise get into the way. And don't lean far forward. We You'll see people innovating with a chin on their chin, basically on a patient's forehead. You want to be far enough back that you have a good view of everything that's going on. The face, the mouth, the oropharynx, the hypopharynx, the larynx, all of it. You should be able to see everything and not be just drilled in on, I'm looking at the larynx. So going in and then leaning back from here is your ideal positioning. Any questions? Just email me. Thanks so much.